Yeah, point of it was she was being called despicable. She was told that she cannot uh, have the opinion. So the child was saying that her opinion is that you can't change your gender. The teacher, and I will make a direct quote, said, that is not an opinion that we express in this school. And if you don't like it, you need to go to a different school. Now, Dominique, I, as much as I'm being silly with my fancy dress, this is a very serious story um, because... I mean, what is going on in this world when children can say that they're cats and be taken seriously at school? Exactly. And I'm afraid that teacher is just one of the many examples we're seeing of, of teachers, educators, people that are trusted um, with, you know, our children's understanding of this world, their readiness to actually explore different points of view. When teachers are actively, very aggressively shouting that down in quite an emotionally unstable way, I think. I don't know whether or not the issue was very personal to that teacher in particular, but the way she dealt with it was completely unprofessional. And to say that if you express these views that she really has decided is unacceptable. I'm not sure she speaks for the whole entire school. If you don't like it, find another school. Um, is an example of how polarised this debate has actually become, where anyone who expresses, you know, a pretty much scientifically sound view that there are only two genders and that identifying yourself with a cat is, you know, really, it doesn't make any sense at all, does it? Um, you get shouted down and, and called a homophobe. She's linked it she to did. homophobia. She did. She said she was, she was saying, why do you think, this is a direct quote, why do you think we have so many problems in the world with homophobia? Now, look at this little graphic, everyone. Um, some people would say that there's about 70-odd uh, genders. This one uh, describes 18. This was uh, an NHS uh, questionnaire thing that was asking you to identify uh, with all of these different genders. Which one are you? This is bonkers, isn't it, Nigel? Well, I mean, the teacher, the teacher was uh, unnecessarily aggressive on this one. Um, I thought the kids were actually fighting back quite admirably. And where the teacher should have gone with this conversation is, no, you can't, you can't identify as a cat or an aardvark or a chihuahua or something like that. You cannot identify as a different species. But you think you can change your gender. I d but I do think you can change your gender. And so um, uh, that is enshrined in British law for most purposes. So, so you think, so for example, I could decide uh, that I, so you're saying a, a cat is me taking it too far, but I could It's a different decide. species, so it, it, it would be ridiculous. So as long as it's any the more same than species, box or I could identify, as long as it's the same species, you're comfortable that I could identify as that. So I could identify as a man. Yes, you can. Can I identify as a black man? Uh, then it gets more complicated because uh, transgender is something that is a personal necessity. If you're trying to change your race, um, you, that, uh, that is a choice and it also affects another community. Well, uh, but do you, not, do you not think that this whole transgender thing affects another community? Men saying that they can be women, do you not think that the community of women are affected by that? Well, they are, and that's, that's where, where we talk about, about, about women's spaces. But if you... If, if, under the law, a woman can have a penis. Yeah, I mean, and the, the question then, then is whether or not um, that, that that woman should be uh, able to use women-only spaces. I think not, by the way. But the only, the only difference under the law is you don't send a trans woman with male genitalia into a, pres into well, a woman's yeah. prison. Firstly, just because something is law doesn't mean that it makes sense or that it's right. Um, and, and, you know, if something is not right just because it's law, that doesn't mean, you know, you have to follow it. It's my personal view. Well, you have to follow the law. Um, well, you don't have to follow the law if it's not right, and that's how people affect change. But on, on that, the logic is the same. It doesn't matter if you're identifying as a different race or if you're identifying um, as a different species, because the whole point of being transgender and having gender dysphoria is the idea that you were placed in the wrong body and you identify um, with, with another gender. So using that logic, you can feel like you were born um, into the wrong race because that's a biological thing. You, you can feel as though me not being white is materially affecting my life and my mental health. Same with a different species. I mean, it's not entirely uncommon for people to um, 
identify with animals and want to be animals. I mean, online you can find where people can actually pretend to be dogs and foxes. But they can't cats. be a dog or a fox. But they believe it in their minds, so the logic, <laughs> the logic is, is the same. It is. You know, I, I worry about this because it's all well and good to be a little bit flippant about it, but to me there is a real safeguarding issue here. So you've got companies, external companies, that are going into schools in this country. Uh, parents are not allowed to see what it is, the material that these children are receiving. A parent was going through a tribunal recently uh, and was again, she failed at a challenge to see this uh, material because what they were saying is showing it, showing this material that kids are being taught would breach the confidentiality that they have in place with these schools and reduce their ability uh, to commercialise their proposition. If the material was in the public domain, they couldn't be able to monetize mm. it. This is so worrying. And I think actually parents do need to put a stand up to this, push back against it, because children, they shouldn't be uh, told, you cannot say that there's two genders, you have to respect everyone for whatever it is, whatever. But yet, actually, when someone feels that two genders is a real thing, as is biological sex, that one, you don't have to respect that one. That's just a totally different ball game. Yeah, but that, that, that's the kind of debate that you should have in the schools. And so I can see no, no reason why teachers shouldn't talk about transgender issues in schools, and the government will, are coming out with some guidance that you're talking about there, uh, about what would be appropriate, both by age and the material that, it, that is actually being but, given to kids. But the thing is, it seems as though these charities and these companies are, are all trying to out perform each other with how inclusive and in-depth that they can be, which is what is leading to these detailed and, and really, I, I think, quite indo indoctrinating ideas about gender and really presenting them as facts. I think it's, it's sort of a fever pitch where they all just want to outperform each other. But I think parents should definitely have uh, more of a say because, at the end of the day, it's them that should be in charge um, of, the, of their children's education. I don't think it should be a random teacher with ideological views um, who pushes that onto, onto vulnerable well, kids. Well, Synax changes that you're referring to, some people are saying they're reminiscent of Section 28, which we'll all remember that ban yeah, 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 yeah. of yeah. homosexuality. Anyway, uh, some of the things that he's saying, which sound like common sense to me, uh, teachers must tell parents that their child is questioning their gender, mm. um, no new preferred pronouns until the parents consent. The kids and the teachers don't have to uh, respect the chosen uh, pronouns for the pupils. Would you, would you kind of agree with those measures? Well, no, well, well, the whole thing there is that whatever you, you, a teacher does should be in the child's best interest. So if a child comes to a teacher and says, look, I think I am uh, transgender or I'm gay or whatever, please don't tell mum and dad, I think the teacher should, re should respect that. Um, parents shouldn't have a veto so over what be their children happy, are being taught. you'd be very happy with your son going to school and being regarded in every way at school as a girl and you have no knowledge of it. So your kid is now going, she's called Sarah at school, she's going to girls' toilets, she's talking about breast binding, chest binding, she's talking about potentially uh, being put on a pathway to bodily mutilation and hormones. You'd be comfortable not knowing any of that. Well, well uh, all those things are a long way down, down the road. I mean, you're, you're talking about somebody you might be thinking about, about uh, uh, tran becoming transgender. Well, I tell you, I think this is all a very slippery slope. And as a mum myself, I certainly do worry about this issue. I think it's one of the most serious things going on in our society today.